Hello everyone, it's Matt here, and today I have a box that's come all the way from America. And this is uh, partly custom stuff and partly official Lego stuff, um, but it's from a really well-known brand, uh, in, certainly within the Lego world of historical vehicles. So, I've already opened up the box, um, just to have a quick check that there's no personally... Uh, identifiable stuff in here so I've already removed the packing list and you can't see the dress which is actually underneath this flap um, so let's open up and have a look shall we and instantly you can see that there's peanut shells everywhere so let's get the first few items out and we have a Great Allies War Crate uh, from Brickmania and we also have a pack of World War One Central Powers uh, weapons and a few other bits and pieces. Um, so this, uh, as you can probably guess, is coming from Brick Arms slash Brick Mania. Um, and it's actually part of something I'm planning because uh, it's all to do with the big set that's actually in here. Um, so there's plenty of weapons, um, helmets, um, uh, ammo clip, um, some armour. And a few other bits and pieces. And this will all make sense in a bit. We also have uh, some of the stuff I ordered individually. So we have um, some guns and some Stanhelm helmets, uh, which are always useful. And the gun with the clip. Um, and this is all World War One stuff, uh, which may be a bit of a big hint. Um, should have two packs of these, and we do. Um, we also have some packs of World War One. Infantry, uh, so we have the some for the French and some for the Germans. Uh, these are Roglan's Customs uh, water slide decals. So I've applied water to slide decals before, but not to minifix. Uh, so it's going to be really interesting trying to apply some of these. Um, but I'm going to need to get the, some torsos in the correct colour uh, to use these. But you can probably see it's already starting to poke out um, from underneath all the peanut shells. Oh, Ooh, it's a March magazine. Oh, it's a. No, I didn't realize that. It's a free magazine. Magazine you get. Um, yes, you can actually see it even clearer now. Um, so, put away all the peanut shells, and and just make sure they don't go everywhere. There we go. I do believe that's everything from the box. Yes, it is indeed. Right. So, this, uh, as you can see, is a Mark V uh, World War One heavy tank. This is actually the British uh, tank, or the predominantly British tank. The British tanks in World War I uh, came, sort of, developed from the Mark One all the way up to the Mark V. And the Mark V is actually a upgraded version, essentially, of the Mark IV. Um, so it's got a better engine, a uh, new transmission, um, but on whole it's very much uh, cut of the same cloth. It's very similar, um, it's just a bit more powerful and with some upgraded guns. So what about this kit um, drew me to it? Well, predominantly it's just the fact that I'm actually playing Battlefield 1 and I really like this sort of tank. The British have a knack of trying to build tanks which... At inception, oil thought of uh, the thought process seemed like a good idea, but after a bit of development, probably weren't. And heavy tanks are one of the British tank development's weaknesses, if you like, because the British often built heavy tanks which weren't very manoeuvrable uh, and were quite slow. And the Mark V, especially, was a good tank, but it only had a maximum. Uh, miles per hour of about five and it was also very prone to getting stuck in mud partly because of the sheer weight on the tracks and because there wasn't actually that much grip um, on the tracks at the time um, but I re really like the aesthetic of the tank um, and the wraparound tracks were actually repeated in later tank design in the Churchill family of tanks and I think in one or two other test vehicles um, but really, the wraparound trap uh, 
uh, sort of tread it was predominantly a World War One thing, um, but this was the predominant. The Mark uh, Heavy, whatever version number Heavy Tank was the predominantly uh, British tank um, that they use. There were, I think, one or two others, but the Mark uh, One to Five sort of the predominant firepower for the British, um, and. There you go, that's a custom signature from Dan Siskander himself, I think. No, but there you go. Uh, so there you go, so it says there that it's the exclusive features uh, from this in terms of brick arms are the uh, six pounder gun barrels and the hot shift machine guns. Um, and, the custom, and the figure itself is also custom, but I, I believe every other part in this it's actually a genuine Lego part that you could just go out and buy on Bricklink. Um, but this is predominantly why I placed the order because the this tank kit was originally released back in November 2016 and it's only coming to stock twice after that. Um, the first one in early January, I think. It was just around New Year's and then it's coming back into stock again, so that's why I ordered it. Um, so, to... Bring everything together, so we have the inter for the British side at least, or the Ally side. Um, we have the Mark V heavy tank, the Allies war crate with um, some details and some crates and a gun and a few other bits and pieces. We have the French infantry, and we also have um, the majority uh, the guns that some of the guns that are actually in this pack here and for the German side we actually have this uh, central powers uh, battle pack and the water slide transfer pack so we can do well, what I was planning was actually to get the central powers uh, crate but that was actually out of stock so I ordered the great uh, uh, the allies one instead um, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do a trench or we'll try and uh, do a trench scene. Um, so there's going to be mud everywhere, um, you know, a few bits of grass. And what I'm going to try and do is do sort of like a last struggle from the Germans to try and take a British uh, trench line. Sort of a sort of because for those of you who are sort of reading up on history, World War One towards the end of the war was essentially a stalemate. Um, where neither side was actually gaining any ground in real terms um, and everyone was sort of wearing out and everybody was getting a bit tired and the Germans especially were starting to suffer with a lack of supplies and in addition to that a lot of their soldiers were actually not really uh, soldiers at all a lot of them were quite old um, inexperienced a lot of the good soldiers that they'd had in their army by the end, towards the tail end of the war, um, were either injured and off the battlefield or uh, were dead, save for the one or two that were actually still around. Um, so essentially, this is actually going to be a sort of mock scene of the Germans making a last ditch attempt to attack the um, British and the French. So we've got a British tank and some pits which will actually show up, which will be good for really for any sort of allies trench um but i'm going to show like a combination french slash uh, french slash british uh, trench um so we've got uh, some french soldiers who are say trying to get under attack from the germans and a british mark 5 which has um been in the air and has come to assist or perhaps it's a combined trench and they're all sharing resources uh, and uh, to defend the beat the trench we've got and the British and the French are working together to defend that trench um, from attack from the Germans. Um, so that's it uh, from this order from uh, Brickmania. Um, I'm really looking forward to building uh, the Mark V kit. And I'll probably give a review of it over the next week to two weeks, um, depending on what my schedule is and how fast I can actually build it. Because it is uh, a total of 759 parts. Um, but anyway... Uh, that's all for me at the moment and I'll see you at the next video.